Good morning, everybody. Uh, with the rain comes occasionally technology in, in excitement. So we had to sort of reboot everything this morning. And we have lots happening, so breathe. I'm telling myself to breathe, but it's good if you guys all breathe with me. <laughs> um, today's a busy day, but I want to check, are there announcements for the life of the church first? The deacons are going to meet not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Any other announcements, Wendy? Anything? Okay. Okay. Then... You'll see that today's, if you're, if you're here in the sanctuary, and we have a lot of folks who are sharing bulletins and everything, so it, it figures when we don't make as many copies, lots of people come, so that's a good thing, that we are focusing on two things. Today is Halloween, which is All Hallows' Eve. And as I will explain, we have a tradition for helping to remember people in our lives. It's called Novembering. And we're actually going to commence it today since it's All Hallows' Eve. So the beginning of the service will be focused on remembrance. And then we're going to move towards the themes of water in our lives, especially as it applies in this case today with baptism. So it, it's a theme that we've been visiting for a few weeks. And we're glad. I, I know several people have brought water again today. So should be a lovely and it's a very interactive day for everybody. So if you're in Zoom and you have somebody that you want us to remember, we're going to ask that you put those names in the chat. And we will add them to the tree, possibly not right in the middle of the service, but we will put those tags on the tree along with everybody else's. And we'll definitely pan the room so that people in Zoom can get a chance to see what the tree looks like once the tags have been added. So. With that, I'm going to suggest that we begin the service, and you've already sort of had some gathering music, but let's have another moment of gathering music with Alan, and then we will begin. In honor of all saints, the call to worship is actually taken from a poem or a blessing by Dan Richardson. It was originally baptismal things, but I decided to move it to this. So please join me in the call to worship, which you'll see either on your screen or you'll find right there in your bulletin. Does everybody have a bulletin so they can participate? Lovely. For those who walked with us, for those who have gone ahead, for those who touched and tended us, who lingered with us while they lived, for those who journey still with us in the shadows of awareness, in the crevices of memory, in the landscape of our dreams, this is a benediction. Are there prayers of concern here in the sanctuary this morning that you wish to raise up? Elizabeth has one. Um, so somebody here has the microphone. Who's got the microphone? Okay, great. I have immense 
obviously is a concern for my father, um, Bob, who is 93 and in a nursing home. And he has been suffering, um, well, he has very severe dementia and suffering from reoccurring UTIs that mm -hmm. have affected his, um, uh, his mood, I guess, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And he has become very violent. And um, I'm just, in, he's in Florida and I'm so incredibly worried about him. And um, my sister, Tracy, who is an angel, has been uh, my parents' caregiver for years. And she is um, uh, at the nursing home with both of my parents actually are in a nursing mm -hmm. home. And, and, but she has been um, staying with my father all day. And I just, uh, it's 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 time for me to reach out and and ask for um, help. And he's tired and he's weary and um, just he wants he wants to die. And um, yeah. it's just it's just so sad. You're heartbreaking. It's a cruel illness. It's a cruel illness. It's a very cruel illness. So prayers for those who are living with dementia with Alzheimer's, who are not themselves because of neurological change or physiological change, or those that take care of them, who create a place of safety for them. OK, my Zoom screen just disappeared. That's weird. Can you guys hear me anyway? Yes, we can hear you. OK, I know you can't see me because I'm just nope. disappeared. <laughs> uh, so I, I think our internet's really going to act up today. So we're going to pray this goes well. Um, we continue to pray. And I can do my part without, without the camera for a minute. But um, uh, can we move the microphone forward to Meg, please? Oh, Kevin. OK, Kevin's got the microphone. And then we'll go to Meg. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I want to pray for the members of our church and the visitors, for Emily, Sue, Irene, Conway Humane Society, Paula, my mother, Patricia Hamery, nurses that helped me and took care of me, the Jackson Police and all the churches in the area. And I wanted to say to all of us Christians, if people have hated you, know that they hated Jesus first and if people have rejected you they're rejecting Jesus also thank you proverbs and and real life prayers from Kevin whose baptism will be rededicating today and for Meg please Bob thank you i want to ask for prayers also for my dad who's 100 and lives in a nursing home. His name is Ralph, and he fell Friday and broke um, two bones in his wrist. So he is casted from the elbow to the hand, which means he can't paint, and he probably can't eat very well. So prayers, please, that we can all, and he can um, accept this, because I think it's going to be a long road. I know, and those are the things that he loves best. All right, my, my Zoom has cut out twice in the last few minutes, so this is it's going to be a little exciting this morning. As long as the rest, as long as the primary computer that runs Zoom keeps going, um, we'll, we'll just keep moving along and I'll stand in front of a different camera if I have to. Within Zoom itself, are there prayers of concern? And Sandy, I'm going to rely on you to tell me if there are any because I may be cutting in and out. I think we're good. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, Tom? Tom? No? Okay. No, they're, um, no, they're, no good. they're actually here in the sanctuary, so. Oh, I see. Gotcha. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, but they're, they're, they're logged in, too. Um, if you guys are in in here in the sanctuary and you're using your phone, please turn it off because our internet is really unstable and every single phone that uses our Wi-Fi is, is 
um, kicking us off Zoom. If, if you're not on Wi-Fi, it should be fine. But if you're on our Wi-Fi, maybe just turn it off so we have minimized signals. I just got kicked off again. So um, it's going to be that kind of a day. When we have storms, this happens. I don't know why the internet and storms are connected, but they are. So then let's move to prayers of celebration. Any, um, any prayers? Um, Kevin has prayers of celebration. So the microphone's going back to Kevin. I'm going to try getting on through my phone instead of this and just turn off. I'm, Go gra ahead, Kevin. I'm grateful for the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth. I'm grateful for the woods, the mountains, the lakes, the rivers. And um, I'm grateful for the Native Americans. Good for, for the Native Americans. Okay, thank you. Other prayers of celebration. Okay, we have one over here. Bob? It's not. Is it a prayer of concern? Okay, go ahead. Um, just see it into the microphone so people in Zoom can My hear My big you. sister Nancy, who's 82, um, had her entire reproductive system removed because of cancer. Wow. And she has two different kinds of cancer. And she's getting very sick right now from chemo. So and say her she's first lost a ton of weight. So I'm really worried about her. Say her first name again, please. Her, <clears throat> my sister Nancy is, her Nancy. name is Nancy Mead. Mead, okay. Mm -hmm. So prayers for Nancy, who, you know, today brings to us the face of those living with cancer. We know there's several people within our community that are living with various types of cancer. Some are life limiting, some are chronic, some are people are in recovery. Um, pr prayer of concern or celebration? Okay, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna migrate to celebration, I think. Go for it. Um, this week on, no, last week on Thursday, I got my teeth pulled. Um, but the Thursday before that, I was going to get my teeth pulled, but I got a bit scared. And I didn't let them do it. So that last week, I was brave, and I asked to let them do it. Wow. So Evie was brave, and she let them pull her teeth. That was pretty great that they actually worked with you, Evie, and let you come, you know, do it on your at your own pace so that you didn't feel like you were being made to do something that you weren't ready for. Um, and you were really brave to do that. That's what I, I've had a lot of teeth pulled and I, I know it's no fun. And it's very brave. Other prayers of celebration here. Or how about in the gallery? Do, is anybody in Zoom happy? Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, I'm just thankful for everything God has blessed us with. And um, I am so looking forward to my 50th birthday in about three weeks or so. And my sister bought my, um, myself and my husband a night at a Scottish Inn in Hocking Hills. And so I'm really like we're added another day for our anniversary, which is two days before my birthday. Mm -hmm. So we're, this is like our Belated honeymoon slash 15th anniversary slash 50th birthday celebration. So it's, I'm looking so forward to it to get away. Nice. Okay, if you're in Zoom, I had to migrate to a different device. So I, I look different now. Ginger's got a prayer of celebration. Yes, yeah. Um, so Dave and I are celebrating our 41st anniversary on the 1st of November. And, um, and it's just so wonderful to see so many people here today. This is fantastic. And um, in November, our daughter's she's gonna be giving birth at some point. So next time, hopefully we'll have a, we'll let you know. <laughs> I, was show, I was showing the people, if, if they happen to be looking at my square, that there were a lot of people here. Um, anybody else in Zoom who has a prayer of celebration that you wanna share? Sandy, do you see anybody? I want to make sure we don't miss anyone. I do. 
Go for it. I'm looking out at the most gorgeous river right now, and the sun mm -hmm. just broke through maybe 20 minutes ago. It's a mighty river right this minute, let me tell you. It's just very, very pretty. It is a mighty river right now. It's been rolling pretty hard. We had at least two inches of rain in the last 24 hours, which may not sound like a lot, but when you put it in a narrow body of water, it goes pretty fast. Actually, my thing showed 3.1 inches. Oh, 3.1. Wow. So there you 3. go. 3.1. Wow. But then I live in Bartlett, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're so far away from us. There are. Yeah, right. Anything could be happening over in Bartlett. Who knows? <laughs> For anybody that doesn't live in this area, that's like one town away. So just so we're clear on our geography. Um, any other prayers of celebration in Zoom? Prayers of celebration here. Then I ask that you pray with me. Oh, holy love. For the power of the world to remind us that we are not in control, though we dearly love to be. That this world is yours, although you have given it into our keeping. That the water can be risky and dangerous, but you will wade into those places with us and bring us through to safety, whether it is this shore or another shore. But that in the crossing, in the immersion, we will be changed and that the change can be one of growth and transformation. And where change is happening, it feels terrible. Yet we bear witness because sometimes this is what we as humans can do. We bear witness to Bob and to Nancy, to those that we love who are on journeys for which we feel powerless. May those who are on these journeys, including ourselves, find love where it is least expected, light, comfort, peace, dignity. And may you be the guide to the far shore. We offer you our silence. And we pray together as you first taught us. And I ask if you're in Zoom that you would unmute so we can hear your voices unified with ours. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come. The kingdom come. Thy thy kingdom come. come. I will be down on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. And, and forgive us our sins as we, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to take a few moments this morning to remember those that we love. At the beginning of Novembering, in this time of All Hallows Eve, which precedes All Saints and All Souls Day, this is a time which grows out of multiple traditions, but in the 8th century, Pope Gregory declared that this would be a time on All Saints Day to remember those who were called to work in the church and serve in the church. And people that are called to this kind of love are very imperfect and messy. But it's a bigger idea because All Saints is also followed by All Souls. So this is a way of remembering all the people in our lives. They don't have to be saints or ministers or active in some specific church. It's all the people that we love because the great and the binding commandment of our faith tradition is love. This is what we are called to do now by loving people who have gone ahead of us and remembering and honoring their lives. So we're going to, I'm going to ask the deacons to grab the baskets that are in the narthex. There should be two of them. Bob, if you can go grab the basket on the other, or Wendy will go. 
um, and pass out the small tags that you'll find. If everybody will take a tag and please write a name of anyone that you want to remember. And the girls actually have uh, strings for us. <laughs> with, or the, I cut them in half. I think they're, are they over on the end of your pew or? Yeah, okay. So um, Palant and Evie, would you pass out strings for everybody too? Do you mind? And for those that are in Zoom, I, um, I invited you to, through chat, to share with us the names of those that you want us to remember. And, you know, it doesn't have to be human. We remember to those who are part of our lives and part of our family who are our pets, who are really important to us. And so I have the names of people who have died, and I have the names of pets that we want to also put on the branches today. So if there's anybody in Zoom you want to have us. Can it fix it? And if for any reason you're having trouble with chat, feel free to go ahead and email the church the names, and we will certainly include them that way too. Once you've written the name on the tag, girls, would you pass out strings to people? Great. If you would come forward, please, and place your tags on the branches up here that have lights on them, then they will stay up there through November, or at least through the middle of November, to be remembered.
so beautiful. We're going to sing now about our saints. And for those that are in Zoom, um, I've written down the names that you shared, and I will hang them shortly on the tree. Please rise for song 486, For All the Saints. If you're in Zoom, we will be putting the words right up on the screen for you, and Alan will be... In case it isn't obvious, I turn off my microphone when we are singing so you can't hear me over the loudspeaker. I am not the designated song leader. I sing, I'm just not singing into the microphone. So we have a lot of scripture, but I'm actually going to just have us, um, Wendy and Sue, did you guys connect about reading? You did, okay. Could I have you come forward again and read from the um, microphone? Again, we're covering the theme of water, so I hope you can all see again how these passages all connect, especially as we focus on baptism. Good morning. Good morning. First reading is from the Gospel of Mark, the baptism of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. From Mark, Jesus, um, yeah, read into the microphone. Jesus stills a storm. And leaving the crowd behind, he took him with them in the boat. Just as he was, a great, a great windstorm arose. The waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Reading from John. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were terrified, but he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. 
from Acts. Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your son's sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. A reading from Acts. Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who, are, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Acts. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? From Acts. And now why do you delay? Get up be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. Romans, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized unto Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. From 1 Corinthians, warning from Israel's history, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses within the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food, all and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Corinthians, Corinthians again, one body with many members. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, Slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. From Galatians, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. From Peter. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and the powers made subject to him. Thank you. That was a lot of reading, both to absorb and to undertake. So I appreciate both of you doing that. Thank you. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So how many people here in the sanctuary brought water today? One, two, three, three, four, four. 
Okay, four. All right. And we know that we've had water that was shared with us the past couple of um, weeks as well. The water, like the stories, come from many places. And sometimes they come like the river after 3.1 inches. They're powerful. They could be destructive. They're frightening. There's risk involved. Other times, they're life-giving and gentle and just what we need. Water runs through the thread of the stories of the Bible. And on Friday night, we were puzzling out, why would you even choose, you know, how do you come up upon water as the symbolic element for baptism itself? Water runs through the Jewish tradition, purification through ritual baths like the mikvah, the necessity to drink from a well in a desert because water is so precious, and every story where a crossing occurs, where people are in danger or they're about to enter a new place and everything is about to change. Water is one of the unifying elements. And while we may not be in control of it, the people who wrote these stories believe that God had control of it. And that in the story of Jesus, he either immerses himself right into the middle of something that everybody else thinks is too powerful to be controlled or manipulated. He dips himself into the river. Or he walks across waters that are troubled, or he stills waters that are troubled. For him, to be in connection is safe, and through him, we are connected to one who will accompany us no matter how dangerous the circumstances may be, how life-altering they may be. If we're looking for a symbol in any story, and we find water in that story, we can be sure that somebody is being transformed. Even if they're taking a cup of water from someone else or offering a cup of water to someone else or they're crossing an ocean or they're crossing a river, transformation is happening. If you were the people in the boat when the storm was coming, and the one that you trust was asleep. And you had to go wake him up and you feared for your life. But then he calmed everything and stayed with you. How would your relationship to that one change? The girls and I were talking about it this morning. And we felt like we would be happy if we made it to the other side of a dangerous situation. Alive, that would be good. So gratitude and happiness. But also, we would probably have warmer, more tender feelings for the person that helped us, greater trust. Anytime water is introduced as an element in the sacred stories, transformation is sure to happen. And I hope you notice that in some of these passages, particularly 1 Corinthians and 1 Peter, the people from the gospel times refer backwards to the stories and the traditions that have been handed down through the Jewish religion, the Jewish practices, and they tie those stories to the new traditions that they, as a new movement, are beginning to develop. They refer to Moses. They refer to Noah. And they see themselves as the heirs. They find continuity between those stories from their ancestors and where they are right now. And we, by gathering the waters that we find in our own lives from, let, tell me where your water's from. Meg, where's your water from? Puget Sound is where Meg's water's from. Girls, where's your from? The Saco River. Who else has water this morning? So, Deanna? Meredith Bay in Winnipesaukee and Wendy? 
from Wendy's well. So we have water from rivers, from lakes, from Puget Sound, and we have water straight from somebody's well. And now we have a car horn going off in the distance just to triumphantly ring in our water. We are combining the tradition that comes from the Unitarian Church of, you know, sharing water and blessing it. And we've invited all these waters to become part of the water that we'll use for the baptism today. But the most important thing to hear is that the water is universal, that water is transformation, and each of you, I'm sure, has been transformed literally by water at some time or another. You need it to stay alive. But it represents transformation through love. And so the greater question is, when have you needed somebody to accompany you with love into a place of danger or risk or change or growth? a parting, a beginning? When have you been the one who was the guide, who walked with another into that same place of transformation? We are the body of love of Christ. We are the body that reaches out with our hands, our feet, our hearts, our voices, our minds. We're not waiting for a miracle to change us. We change each other every day by how we live. And although today is about a sacrament, consider that every day you live and the way you choose to love, the stories you share, the people that you recognize, that you are a sacrament. The way you live in the world is a blessing. And one who loves greatly walks with you where you go. I'd like us to turn now to the sharing of the water. And so I invite those forward who have brought water today. And we're going to have you pour it into our baptismal font. So we're going to jump to the camera with the, this focus on the font. And prepare the water that we're going to use for the baptism. Now I have to turn the camera. Good luck to me. Hopefully that's good. Who has water that they brought, brought today? Meg, Kala, and Evie, Deanna, and Wendy. Go ahead and pour your water right into the bowl. I don't think we'll overwhelm it. water that came from the Puget Sound was sent by Kate. So we have long distance water, just so we're really clear, right? Because Meg didn't just recently go to the Puget Sound. Did you guys put yours in? All right. I'm going to call you back up when you can. And hopefully you guys were able to see that. Let this be a living message, not a message that is just me talking to you, but one that you embody. You bring the water to each other as you bring love to each other. The water that we use for sacrament today comes from all of you. And it is holy because we pray over it, but it's holy simply because we love. It was holy because it was brought with love, because it sustained you. And because when we love each other, we transform each other. Thanks be to God. I want to make sure I'm keeping um, in line. So I think the next thing should be baptism. Does that sound right? Good. All right. So there is a, um, if you're here in the sanctuary, there's a, a bulletin with the entire baptismal service in it. If you're 
on Zoom, there are a few parts that we're going to put up on the screen where you're invited to participate. Um, but Wendy, if you would come forward as the deacon. And Kevin, if you will come forward. And girls, actually, if you would come forward, that would be lovely. Yeah, yeah take that one. I'm sure. So um, I think, Kevin, I'm going to have you stand here. Girls, if you want to come over here by Wendy. Uh, there will be one part, and I'll cue you when it's your time, okay? All right. So you and I are going to go to the microphone for the minute, Wendy. Can the people in Zoom hear us? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so you and I are going to read. Friends, today we come to rededicate the baptism of Kevin Hamery. Baptism is a sacred covenant, a set of mutual promises of faith shared among several parties. The people on whom we focus the most are the ones to be baptized. Kevin Hamry. Also sharing in the covenant are the witnesses from this church. The final uh, participant in this covenant is God. And the witnesses will be both those who are gathered in person, but those who are also in Zoom. So we're going to invite all of you when it's time to promise to support Kevin in his rededication of his baptism. Baptism, like all sacraments, is an outward and a visible sign of the grace of God. Grace is a gift that God gives to each and every person. In this action of baptism, we declare the truth that this man and all of us are created in God's image. Beloved just as we are, and beloved for whom we may become, constantly renewed by God's grace. And so uh, we can put up the witness vows screen on Zoom. And for you here in the gathering, right here in the sanctuary, will those who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your prayers and support to Kevin as he lives and walks the way of Christ? If so, please say, we promise with the help of God. I'm going to get us to do it again, just to make sure we're all together here. We promise with, with the help the of God. Very nicely done. And you're going to ask Kevin to stop. Kevin. Yep. Do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to celebrate and honor creation and creator, follow in the path of Jesus Christ, welcome in the presence of the Holy Spirit, resist oppression and evil, love God, self and neighbor, and work for justice, peace and hope with the support of God and the faith community? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. Nicely done. And now we're going to do, this is a tradition which again comes from another church. You'll notice that we have a lot of traditions, like stories and like water that get handed down. So the girls are going to pour the water that was shared prior weeks into the <laughs> baptismal font this morning. And what we're going to do is every time you hear the word water, you pour, right? So I make sure that everybody can see that. I think they can see you. Yeah, great. Okay. So you all can read along, you know, quietly to yourselves while I say this prayer. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters, right? Remember, just a little bit, because you got to save it. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. Rivers flowed out from the first garden of Eden as the headwaters that nourished the world. In the time of Noah and his ark, you washed the earth with the waters of the flood. For Abraham and Sarah and Hagar and their descendants, you provided wellsprings of fresh water to drink and sustain life. Then you led the people of Israel out of Egypt through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom. 
Your power caused a spring to arise from rock in the desert, and later the ark bearing your covenant crossed with your people from the wilderness through the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan. He came living water to a woman at the Samaritan well. He turned water into wine, walked upon the waters, calmed the storm, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all the nations by water and the Holy Spirit. The author of Revelation imagines God's kingdom as a city whose river flows with the water of life to grow trees that heal all nations. Today, pour out your blessing on these waters, O oh God, that carry our stories. May these waters be blessed with the memory of the water in which creation started, life was nourished, people were rescued, and Jesus was baptized. May they unfold this beloved child of God with your promise of belonging, connection, healing, rebirth, and renewal. Amen. Amen. <coughs> yeah, go ahead and pour the rest of it in. Okay, so Kevin, can I have you come right over here to the font? Um, yeah, take off your hat and let's turn, let's have you face the congregation. Okay. All right. Um, you can take your mask off. And now, Wendy, can I borrow the insert? We're sharing everything today. This part's easy, though. Do I got to read? Nope, you don't have to read anything. You just stand here and look handsome. We're going to um, do that so people can see you here. So stand a little bit closer. Okay. Right like that. Yep, good. Can you all see Kevin? Kevin Hamery, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your baptism is remembered and rededicated. You are a beloved child of God. Okay? Thank you. Girls, do you, we have presents for Kevin. These are from the church. We know Kevin likes Bibles, and this is, <laughs> yeah, and, and we're giving him a blanket that was knitted by Enid Violet. Violet? Mm -hmm. Violet. What does she love? <laughs> tell her thank tell her thank you. She knits blankets for our church, which become our he prayer, you know, our prayers, our healing, our blessing to other people. And so this one is for you, wherever you go. I can hug you. You take our prayers with you, okay? All right. Thank you, everybody, for participating in Kevin's rededication of his baptism. And yeah, you, thank you, everyone. You can all um, be seated. All right. Reorienting. I'm also trying to keep us on track for time. Friends, this is a time when we think about the ways that we support each other through our contributions to the church. And so I ask that if you have not done so, but you are able to do so, there are envelopes in the pew. There are mission-based envelopes, either in the pew or out in the front sanctuary. Or you can go on to jxncc.org if you want to do something virtually. But however you choose to support this church, it's much appreciated. It has kept us very healthy for the last 18 months and for much longer than that. And we're not just here in these walls. We're out in the community doing what needs to be done because you helped us. Please rise for the doxology.
turn now to hymn 426 in your red hymnals, or the words will be up on the screen if you are in Zoom. I've got Peace Like a River. I believe we're doing three stanzas. I've got, what do you, um, Chris, can you put up the words so I can see what they were? Peace, joy, and love. We're going to do peace, joy, and love, okay? three songs in a row. We're going to go right into our benediction, and then you'll go in peace. We're going to continue collecting water. We're not done collecting water. You didn't miss your chance if you didn't bring it yet. But um, please go with the stories of each other's water in your hearts and go with the love for each other in your bodies and carry the peace of life and of love into the world and to each other. Go in peace. Mm -hmm. 